today I'm going to show you how to create the fourth out of ten medals that I created. This is procedural gold medal. This is actually three textures. The regular version is on the left, two models, and on the right I've got two displaced versions. Uh, it's not too complicated. This is what our average end node setup is going to look like, but if you want to just buy it, I'll also make it available on my Gumroad and Patreon. So a little bit about gold before we start. Gold is a yellow metal. It is one of the most malleable and ductile of all metals, which means it can be reshaped without breaking, and it can be made into wire pretty easily. It's unaffected by air and most reagents, and its use is primarily in jewelry, glass, and for gold electroplating in electronics. To set up our scene, let's shift D this uh, cube here and hit Y to constrain it to the Y axis. And if you hold down Control, it'll kind of snap to the grid there then you can just left click when you're happy with the placement. For this first one, let's hit S, Z, and 0.1 to size it along the Z axis and hit Control A and apply that scale. Then come over here to the modifiers panel. And let's add a bevel modifier. Go 0 0.04 for the amount and then three for the segments. Then uh, W or right click to open up this context menu and hit Shade Smooth. For this second cube, let's select that guy, hit Control 4 sets up a subsurf modifier. Hit control A while you're hovering over that and then let's add a cast modifier because this isn't actually a sphere quite yet. In the factor here let's enter in one, hit enter, and then open up the context menu with W or right click and hit shade smooth. Hit control A to apply this cast modifier as well. I'm going to hit shift A and bring in a plane. Hit S and 10 to scale it up by a factor of 10 and I'm going to hit G and then Z. Move it down a little bit there. Tab into edit mode, and I'm just going to grab this back edge here. Uh, hit 2 to go in edge select, then you can select it there. Hit E and Z to extrude it along the Z axis, and then I'm going to grab that edge there and hit Control B. Open up this bevel here. Uh, use your mouse wheel to create some new cuts there. This looks about right, maybe one more. And then I'll tab back into object mode, hit W or right uh, click to open up this context menu, and hit Shade Smooth. Now we have a little background. Let's add in some HDRI lighting. I'm going to click on this light and just delete it. Come over here to the world properties in this yellow circle next to color. Click on that and click on environment texture. Click on open and just find where you've got your HDRIs. If you don't have any, check out hdrihaven.com there. Uh, you don't really need 4K ones. You probably only need one or 2K max, but I've got a bunch of 4K ones here because I downloaded them. Uh, I'm going to do Kaylee Interior 4K, open that guy up. Then if I go pull down Z and move my mouse up, I'm going to go into rendered mode, and we can see the background there is now lit up with an HDRI. Let's change over to the Cycles Render Engine as well, and go to GPU Compute if you have that option. If you don't worry, if you don't have it, don't worry about it. But if you do have it, do switch to it because it'll be faster. Let's quickly set up a camera angle. While well, this is highlighted here, just hit the period in the bottom right hand corner of your keyboard. And on that number pad, hit 1 and then 8, you know, a couple times there. Uh, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and set it up. Uh, Control Alt 0 on the number pad. And I'm going to grab my camera and hit G Z Z to zoom out. Maybe I'll just come out of uh, rendered mode there for a second. And then G and Z to move up. And R and X, X to rotate along this. Uh, vertical axis here. So something like this is pretty good. If I go into render mode, um, I like to look at that so far. Let's change this entire middle area to our shader editor and the top right to our 3D viewport. Hit N while you're hovering over the shader editor to get rid of that shelf on the right. And uh, our material should be on both of these here. Go ahead and call it something like gold. Uh, should be good for now. And uh, let's go ahead and make this a little bigger as well so we can see what we're doing. Make sure we Hold down Z and move our mouse up to go into rendered mode there. So this is going to be fairly similar to the first two metals that I did, the uh, iron and silver. Uh, I'm just going to move that principled BSCF out of the way and bring in a texture coordinate node. Just place it right here. And then I'm just going to bring in a noise texture. Make sure we're coming out of object. I'm just going to place this noise texture right on there. Then bring in a mix RGB. Place it right here. And let's just, re uh, let's just feed the object into color 2 as well. For this noise texture we're going to set it to 0.6 and leave everything else the same. For this mix RGB we'll set it at 0.9 and leave everything else the same as well. 
Uh, it's not going to make too much of a difference. It's just a very slight distortion running through the whole thing. Next, I'm going to set up a mapping node, place it right here, then a musgrave, place it right here, and then a color ramp, and place that one right here. The mapping node will leave uh, as is, but the musgrave will set it at 6.5, 9.3, 0.1 and uh, we'll leave it at 2 I guess because that's what it was for the lacunarity there and uh, this is going to be the settings for most of these muskers that we set up uh, except for one so that's why I'm just kind of setting it like that beforehand and for this black we're going to set this at a 0.4 gray and we're going to bring this white down to 0.8 you can see it's kind of this gritty texture here and what we're going to do next is uh, just move this up a tiny bit and then control shift D it four times. So we've got five of these strands here. I'll just move this down a little bit. Just kind of put it in the middle there. Let's look at the first strand. Uh, we'll look at the mapping node. We'll change X to two. Z will change to seven under location. Then X under scale will change to 0 0.5. You can see it's just kind of stretched the uh, pattern a little bit along the X axis. We'll leave these other two the same. The reason this is kind of a gray color instead of black is because we're going to add all five of these textures together and if it's too dark then uh, it ends up being uh, too dark with the final product so we need to keep these initial ones lighter. Let's look at the second strand now. I'm going to bring up a preview here. Let's just control shift left click. It's a node wrangler shortcut. For this mapping node we'll change the Y under location to 0.2 and then we'll change the X scale to 2. And this one stretched a little bit along the uh, the y-axis this time. And then we'll come over here to the color ramp. We'll change this to 0.45. We'll leave everything else as is. Let's mix these two together. Uh, the, the node wrangler shortcut for that is you hold down control and then shift and you right click from one of these nodes to the other one. It's going to bring up this mix RGB. Let's just change this to multiply and then change this to one. We can see already it's kind of got a cool gritty overlay texture where we kind of got, you know, three tones. Let's take a look at the third strand now, starting with the mapping node. We'll change the Y to 0.4. We'll change the Z to negative 8. Then we'll come down to the X scale and we'll change this to 0.2. Uh, let's see what that looks like. It's uh, much more stretched along the X axis this time. Then we'll come to the Musgrave texture. We'll change this to 1 for the scale. Leave everything else the same. So it's a lower frequency thing, a bigger pattern there. Let's come to the color ramp into this gray here. We're going to change this to 0.3 for the value. It's a little bit more heavily weighted with this one here. Let's go ahead and add it to our mix as well. Control, shift, and right click and drag from one of those nodes to the other ones. Uh, change it to multiply and change this to one. You can already see how dark the pattern is getting. So we're going to have to lighten it up at some point. But now you see that bigger texture overlaid over top there. Take a look at this fourth strand and uh, the mapping note there. We'll set the X location to 8, the Y to 0.6, and then let's come down here to the X scale and change this to 4. This is stretched along the Y axis again there. We'll leave the Musgrave as is and then we'll change the gray down here to 0.8. So this is going to be you know much lighter weighted here so it's not going to contribute as heavily, but it's still going to tr contribute a little bit there. Change that to multiply and change it to one. We can see the texture is a little bit more layered now. On to the last strand. Let's take a look at that guy and the mapping node. We'll change X location to 0.1, Y location to 0.7, and then we'll change the X scale to 6.8. Uh, for the Musgrave, we'll leave all that the same, and then we'll come to the gray value on the bottom of this color ramp. And we'll change this to 0.6 for the value. So it's a little bit uh, you know, lighter than most of them, but heavier than this last string that we set up. So uh, go ahead and mix these together. Go to multiply and drag it across to one. Let's move this over here. And then I'm gonna bring in a color ramp and add it right after here. We're just gonna lighten up this image by dragging the white down to 0.3. We can see this is what we've got so far. I'm going to add in another color ramp here. Just place it right here and then shift 
or Control Shift D this guy so it stays attached three times. And this is going to be the color on the top. This is going to be the metallicness. This is going to be the roughness. And this is going to be the normal map down here. Let's grab this principled BSDF that we were hiding back here and just place it on this noodle here. Control Shift left click this guy to get the preview going. Let's drag this across so metallic is one. Then let's split our screen and change this to the image editor on the left. And I've got this uh, reference of a piece of gold metal here we can use uh, for our color. If I hover over this section of this color ramp, I can hit E and it brings up this eyedropper tool. And I can drag it across this image and it gives me you know, all these points uh, where I dragged across. It just adds up to 30 points or 31 and then it just starts deleting the old ones. But you can do that as many times as you want get a variety of uh, different results here. So I'm just going to do this a few times until I'm happy. That looks good. Uh, let's stick with this. I'm going to close this window back up here and move on to the second one, which is going to be our metallicness. Uh, let's set the black at 0.4 and the white is going to come down to 0.39. Let's just see what that's doing. It's created this white and black map with very little gray in between. The white is going to be where it's the metallic value of 1, so that's going to be metallic. And the black is non-metallic. So we'll plug this right into here. Let's see what that looks like. Next, let's set up the roughness. Uh, I'm going to set the black to 0.64, and then change this value to a 0.55 gray. Let's plug that right into the roughness here. And then uh, let's create a bump note. Just place it right here. Feed this into the height. And then we'll just move these over a tiny bit here. And I'm going to set up this, uh, this color ramp here, the same as this one, actually. So we'll set the black at 0.64, and then set it to 0.55 gray. Then let's change the strength on this bump node to 0.5. And just plug this right into the normal. There we go, we've got our main metal. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Select, select both these guys. Hit Shift D and constrain it to the X axis. Uh, so we've got these new ones here. And I'm just going to go ahead, click on that sphere, and let's click on this symbol here. This creates a new material but keeps the current node set up there. I'm going to call this Gold Disp 1. And then we'll go to this uh, flattened cube here. Click on this symbol again. We'll call this Gold Disp 2. Let's start with this sphere here. Uh, I was kind of going off of that picture that I used to select this color ramp here, where it kind of has some interesting detail with some kind of noise and then kind of some sharp edges as well. So I'm going to start by bringing in a texture coordinate node. Just make sure it's coming out of object. And then I'm going to bring in a noise texture. Just place it right here. And then a mix RGB. And just place it right afterwards. Plug object into color 2. We're going to set the noise texture to 40 and this mix to 0.97. So it's high frequency, but uh, there's very little of it coming through. Then I'm going to bring in another noise texture and just place it right afterwards. I'm going to change this to 4D. Uh, it's not totally necessary to do 4D, but it's nice to have this. W value right here. It's kind of like a seed value. So I'm going to leave that at zero though. Change the scale to one and the detail to four. I'm going to bring in a color ramp. Place it right here. And then a math node. Place it right here. Change it to multiply and change the value to one. Come over here to the material properties because we're going to have to enable displacement. Come to the settings and just scroll down where it says displacement. Change this from bump only to displacement and bump. Let's quickly add a subsurf mod as well. Just come to the modifiers panel and add subdivision surface and let's just change this to two. I'm going to bring in a displacement node, place it right here, and um, we'll just plug this into the displacement and we'll make sure that this multiply node is going into the height. We're going to change uh, the mid-level to one. Let's go ahead and view this again. Yeah, so we can see what that noise is doing. It's uh, 
creating some higher frequency and lower frequency stuff there as well. Just some nice details. There's probably more than enough here, but uh, I also wanted to just kind of do some harder edges. So I'm just going to bring in a Voronoi node, make sure object is going into vector, and I'm just going to set the scale to 1.5. With it coming out of distance, I'm going to bring in an RGB curves node. Just place it right here and adjust this a little bit so that it looks kind of like this right here. Just something like this. Um, you can play around with the shape if you want. I'm going to bring in a multiply node and just set this to 0.5 and then add it to this string here by duplicating this multiply, changing it to add, and then just adding this bottom one there. Let's see what that looks like. I need to zoom out a bit. Yeah, we can see now that we've got these harder edges here as well as that small detail there. So it's a little bit more dynamic uh, of shape there. If we left this one down here, by the way, I'll just show you what happens. It kind of gets sucked in in the corners there. So I just kind of like the, the shape that this makes a little bit better when it's um, just manipulated by this RGB curves node. If you wanted to make this a little bit bigger, you could just play with this mid-level as well. Maybe I'll do that and just bring it down to 0.8 or 0.9. If you want some different seeds for this one as well, you can come to this noise texture that we set to 4D and change this W value. You can see we get a variety of different shapes here, which is kind of cool. We could do the same thing if we wanted to to this Voronoi. Maybe set that to 4D, then change these W values. Pretty cool the variety you can get there. Let's take a look at the flattened cube here. I'm going to zoom in and bring in a texture coordinate node. Make sure this is coming out of object with Control, Shift, and left clicking a few times until it's there. I'm going to bring in a noise texture, uh, place it right here, and change this to 4D. Uh, again, it's not necessary, but it gives us a seed value this W value here. We can change around. I'm going to leave it at 0 though and change the scale to 2 and the detail to 6. Then I'm going to bring in a color ramp, place it right here, and uh, we'll bring in a mix RGB, place it right here. This is going to go into the factor and this is going to go into a displacement node. So let's bring this down a little bit here. Plug this into the height on the displacement node. We'll plug this into the displacement here, and um, we'll just have to enable displacement as well. So come down on the material properties to bump only, change that to displacement and bump, then come to the uh, uh, the modifiers panel, and we've got this bevel modifier. Let's hit Control A and apply that, and then add a subdiv surface modifier. Let's try two for now, and let's change color one to black. We can see when we do, um, it's just kind of an extreme thing there. So uh, I'm going to need to bring some stuff over here. Let's bring the black above and the white below. And uh, this is pretty good actually already. So if we want to play around with this, we can. We can see it starts really encroaching when we move the white down. And this black here just kind of uh, makes stuff deeper or, or shallower, those divots. Let's set the white at 0.59, and the black will set this at 0.8. And then we'll change it to a 0.75 gray. Looks a bit better. Um, I think I might have had this coming out of the factor. Yeah, that's what I had. So it's a bit more drastic, and it's just a different seed. So you could always scroll through these W values here and just get different results with each value. I'll leave that at zero for now. Let's come over to the displacement and uh, we'll leave the mid-level as is. We'll change the strength to 0.7. And I think uh, as well, this value here, I changed it to 0.75. Um, in fact, let's just take a look why. So it's basically looking at these bevels side by side. And I felt like it was a little bit closer at 0.75. At 0.735, it's just a little bit smaller over here. So if I set this at 0.75, it'll look the same. So that's it. I uh, hope you're able to see what I was doing. I could follow along. If you have any questions, just let me know, and I'll see what I can do to clear up any confusion. Thanks for watching.